Hey guys, so you decided you want to build a DOS gaming machine. Well, there are lots of options. You're actually spoiled for choice. You can build something period correct or use something a little bit more modern. The community, we call it a time machine. In this video, the focus is on building a machine that is very fast. So we want to play high resolution DOS games like Tomb Raider or System Shock running at 640 by 480 as well as yeah also some of the older games and the other focus is price i want to make sure that this machine doesn't cost too much it's never going to be a bargain prices have gone up but it's not going to cost you as much as a real period correct retro pc like i said there are many platforms that you can choose but I really like this one. I've been using the Athlon 64 in quite a few recent videos and it turns out to be an excellent platform for Windows 98 and MS-DOS. This motherboard is from Gigabyte. It is the GA-K8VM800M. It's got socket 754 and it's nothing special. It has a chipset from Via. And back in the day, people probably wouldn't have picked this mainboard. Everyone wanted a NVIDIA Enforce chipset, but the tables have turned for retro computing for running those classic games. The Via chipset is actually better, it is more compatible with DOS sound cards. The Socket 754 is also right at the edge between old and new. It means we are compatible with DOS and Windows 98, but we're getting some modern features. For example, we have the 12 volt. ATX power connector. That means we are compatible with modern power supplies. We do get SATA, although I don't recommend using SATA. Some chipset uh, implementations that do work. Um, sometimes you need to patch the operating systems with a SATA driver. So I recommend stick with the IDE ports. They are compatible and they work really well. We're also getting USB. That means we can use USB input devices, keyboard and mouse, but make sure to check the BIOS, there might be an option to enable keyboard and mouse support, otherwise it doesn't work under MS-DOS. And we also get a socket that is compatible with modern CPU coolers. You can buy a uh, cooler for a Ryzen and it will fit with this mainboard. As for the processor, it doesn't really matter too much. Slow is good. We don't need the fastest. I happen to have an Athlon 64 3400 plus, which is quite overkill. Any Sempron or Athlon 64 will have enough performance and you can actually down clock the clock speed, maybe one gigahertz by lowering the multiplier in the BIOS. You can then lower the voltage and build a, uh, yeah, eco-friendly retro PC that consumes a little power and outputs very little heat and noise. For RAM, we need DDR memory. I have a DDR400 memory module with 256 megabytes of capacity. Again, this is way too much. You can get modules with 128, that's perfectly fine. Less is better, actually. There are a few DOS games that don't like such large amounts of RAM, but there are software workarounds. We need a video card. The interface is HEP, so we need a compatible video card and there are many choices. I'm going with this ATI Radeon 9200 LE and the main reason is because I want to uh, capture the video output. It has DVI and under MS-DOS it will output at 1280 by 1024 which is really easy to capture. That's the main reason why I picked this card. Otherwise, this is not the best card for some older games. For example, here we have footage of Commander Keen and it struggles on the Radeon to produce smooth scrolling. But most of the other games worked just fine. So a handful of games are not compatible. Well, don't scroll smooth on the Radeon card. That is the bottom line. And if you're actually playing on these uh, retro PCs, you wanna use the VGA output. You get 70 Hertz in DOS games whereas through DVI you get 60, so not quite uh, smooth frame rate. And some games actually synchronize to the frame rate and will run slower through DVI. Lotus 3 is an example of such a game. Sound is very important, so we need a sound card. And you can spend a lot of money on fairly decent sound cards. For example, the ESS Solo 1 or the Yamaha YMF. 
are known to be really compatible with DOS games, but they are quite hard to find these days, uh, very sought after. So we're going with the Creative Labs Sound Blaster Live. Now this is an okay DOS sound card. The main strength is really Windows 98. It's compatible with EAX, it sounds terrific. It has lots of inputs and outputs, a decent mixer, but the DOS compatibility is not that bad, especially if you're playing late era DOS games that uh, support 3D graphics and high resolution. They have more compatible drivers and they work pretty well with the live, as you will see in this video. Under DOS, we get Sound Blaster 16 compatibility and some games like the Crusader games, No Regret and No Remorse, will sound a little bit better compared to a Sound Blaster Pro. We also get compatibility with General MIDI. Many games supported that, so if you see the option in the setup menu, choose General MIDI. It's not the best sound font under MS-DOS, but it's better than nothing, and at least in System Shock, it sounds fairly decent. For storage, I have pretty much said goodbye to mechanical hard drives and I'm using modern SSDs with a SATA to ID adapter. This one is from StarTech. I reviewed this adapter in a recent video. It's terrific and works really well with these projects. I'm using a 32 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. You can go with a higher capacity, 60 gigabytes or 120 gigabytes is perfectly fine. The reason why I'm using such a small capacity is older machines have issues with larger hard drives and also it partitions and formats faster. We need an optical drive, especially the late era DOS games. They all shipped on CD and many games had digital audio as well. So there's an analog uh, audio output at the back and you need to connect a cable from here to the sound card and then configure the mixer. The Sound Blaster Live has a DOS mixer utility, so you can adjust the levels to your liking under MS-DOS. And we need some software. We need Windows 98 SE. You can download the ISO from WinWorld, also the CD key. I will put a link down below in the video description. And we need some games. Now I buy my games from GOG. Disclosure, I am a GOG affiliate. There are links in the video description. I get a small commission, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. GOG is DRM free, so you don't need a launcher. You don't need internet connection. You can download all the games onto a USB and then just install them on a retro PC that is completely offline with no internet connection. And that is terrific. Many of the GOG games work fine on a retro PC. Most DOS releases are shipping with DOSBox and are really easy to get going. For example, here we have System Shock. Uh, GOG supplies the original ISO. You just burn it onto a disk and install it on your retro PC. I do spend a little bit of time in the BIOS. First, I load all the defaults and then I disable any resources that I don't use, like the floppy drive, the floppy controller. I make sure the boot order is correct. I check the RAM speed and I turn off onboard devices like SATA, the uh, USB 2 ports. I only need uh, USB 1 to be honest. We don't need Ethernet, we don't need the onboard audio as well. And make sure the USB mouse and USB keyboard option, make sure those are enabled so that the keyboard and mouse works under DOS. And now we need to install Windows 98. So I'm booting off the CD. We're using the FDisk command to partition the drive. After a reboot, I'm using the format command to format the drive and then I turn off the retro PC. I use a USB to SATA adapter that allows me to copy the Windows 98 installation files onto the SSD as well as all the games, the drivers and whatnot. It makes the process really easy. And here we can see the Windows 98 installation process. And here we are on the desktop and you can actually, if the focus is on DOS gaming, you can leave it like that. You don't need sound driver under Windows. You don't need graphics driver under Windows if the focus is just playing uh, DOS games. But the default resolution isn't that nice. So I'm loading the latest chipset drivers. Then we're loading the ATI Radeon drivers followed by the sound card drivers. And if you want to copy files and drivers from USB. There's a native USB driver version 3.6. Uh, just plug in a flash drive afterwards and you can just copy files like on a, 
on our modern computer. I put a link to that driver down below in the video description. Setting up MS-DOS can be quite complicated with manually having to edit the config sys and autoexec batch files. So a while ago I put together the startup files. It's called MS-DOS mode super easy. You just copy a shortcut on the desktop as well as a driver's directory onto the uh, C drive and then by double clicking on the shortcut the machine will reboot and you get a boot menu where you can choose if you want a mouse what sort of memory you want and it loads the mouse driver the cd-rom driver all without having to do anything manually dos performance is outstanding for example in the pc player benchmark as well as in the quick time demo we're getting over 300 fps so let's test some games first up is tomb raider the first game so this runs entirely uh, in software, so there's no 3D acceleration. The CPU does all the 3D graphics calculation and you can toggle between 320 by 200 and 640 by 480 and yeah, the game runs well. Now Tomb Raider is not the smoothest game. I believe it's got a frame rate cap of, I think it's 25 or 30 FPS, so it, it will never be silky smooth under DOS. Uh, but it looks sharper than at 320 by 200 and we also get working audio so the sound blaster support was perfectly fine and we can also hear the uh, CD audio track playing in the background uh, routed from the CD-ROM routed through the sound card. System Shock runs much smoother I don't have a frame rate counter but it looks like this is 60 FPS so here you need to go into the options and change the resolution to 640 by 480 and look at that uh, such a smooth game there are lots of controls I actually had to look in, in, in the manual to figure out all the shortcuts and you can make it uh, full screen that looks beautiful and definitely a game worth revis revisiting and playing at 640 by 480 I did have some time to test a few more games here we have Gateway, this is a really cool science fiction adventure running at 640 by 480. It supports Sound Blaster FM on the Sound Blaster Live. The music plays just fine. And yeah, definitely a game worth getting and playing. And here we have Crusader No Regret, runs at 640 by 480. This uses sampled music in the background and the controls. I find them a little bit clunky and haven't played too much so but yeah it's looking good and it does support some better audio to showcase what a Sound Blaster 16 can do compared to a Sound Blaster Pro for example. So guys what is the verdict? Well I actually didn't run into too many issues. I expected more difficulty with the Sound Blaster Live. It is known to not be as compatible as other sound cards. But on this mainboard with the wire chipset, we're getting fairly decent compatibility even in older games. Now, not every game will work. So this is not the perfect DOS machine, but it should be more affordable, for example, than building a 386, a 486 or a Socket 7 time machine and easier to find the parts as well. Plus more compatible with an ATX case, ATX power supply, so you can USB, you can use USB for storage, for easy data transfer. And under Windows 98, don't forget networking. You can connect to your home network, use FTP, send files, games, and drivers through the network. So that's also pretty nice. Setting up MS-DOS is not easy, especially if you're new to this hobby. And that's why I recommend go with Windows 98. Windows 98 in general is a little bit more compatible than 95. Um, and on this machine, the performance, there's no difference. And with Windows, you get a nice user interface. Folder management is easy, creating folders, copying things around. You can use USB storage to copy drivers and your games. And yeah, nice high resolution. It's just a lot easier. And then you just use the MS-DOS mode, uh, easy, MS-DOS mode, super easy. And that gives you a nice experience. You don't have to open the command line and edit startup files. So I put that together to yeah get more people interested in this hobby. Now, if you think that a Athlon 64 or Pentium 4 is total overkill for DOS gaming, well, it, it depends on the games. 
if you're playing at 640 by 480 or even higher, then you want all the CPU performance that you can get. For example, System Shock or Tomb Raider at 640 by 480 will even struggle on a fast Pentium or Pentium MMX. So all in all, the Athlon 64 is a really good platform to start getting your feet wet with MS-DOS and you can also use it for some Windows XP retro gaming. In that case, of course, I would recommend going with PCI Express, more options with the video card and you want to get the best processor possible. Uh, in a lot of XP, Windows XP games, you can be quickly CPU limited on this platform. And also, don't discount Socket 939. The main difference is dual channel memory, faster performance. Under Windows 98, it doesn't really matter. But if you're shopping around, keep your eye, eyes open for both platforms and pick whatever is available. And now I would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts about the Athlon 64 for DOS gaming? What system do you use? Have you tried running games at 640 by 480? Does it struggle on your machine? What sort of machine do you recommend to get smooth gaming in System Shock, for example? If you like watching videos about DOS retro PCs, I will put up a couple of videos on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Check your notification settings to make sure you get updates on all the latest videos I'm publishing. And that's it. See you in another one.